the BNP Paribas Open has served as a platform for the North American country to showcase their trio of success stories. Donnie's Shop Evolve Photo by Chrysline Kayo, copyright at Sport Vision. Eight years ago Milos Ronick was the sole Canadian success story of the BNP Paribas Open in Indian Wells. At the age of 20, he received a wild card into the main draw of the 2011 tournament. Stunning 13th seed Marty Fish en route to the third round. During that year Ronick was the only player from his country, man or women, to score a main draw win in the event. At that time, there were only four players in the top 200 from the North American country with two of those in the top 100. Now there is a trio of rising stars paving the way for a new era of Canadian tennis. Denis Shapovalov, Felix Agarali Asim and Bianca Andreescu have all cracked the top 100 before their 19th birthday and have already enjoyed success in the Californian desert in 2019. We can never take credit for all this. We are a facilitator, Tennis Canada Chief Executive Michael Downey told the Canadian Press on match 5th. At the end of the day, there are many parents, many external coaches and the players themselves that go on court and actually win these matches. 18-year-old Agar Ali Asim has posted the most high-profile win of the trio so far in Indian Wells. Saturday, he eased to a comprehensive straight sets win over Australian Open semi-finalist Stefanos Tsitsipas. The teenager has been regarded as a tennis prodigy throughout his junior career and with good reason. At the age of 14, he qualified for the main draw of a challenger event for the first time. He also is a former U.S. Open boys champion and is one of the youngest players of all time at win a challenger title at the age of 16 years and 10 months. More recently he was runner-up at the Rio Open, which is a ATP 500 event. I want to win as much as I can. I want to go as far as I can as a player. I don't know what my limits will be, but I try to work hard every day to go as far as I can. He proclaimed after defeating Tsitsipas. I probably want to feel all the emotions that I can feel on these courts, win as many trophies as I can, embed from Getty Images the achievements have drawn praise from Davis Cup teammate Shapovalov, who is almost 16 months older than him. Nicknamed Chapo, for short, he is still the youngest semi-finalist in the history of Masters 1000 events dating back to 1990. Achieving that milestone at the 2017 Canadian Open at the age of 18, for Felix to get his first top 10 win, I was so, so pumped, said Shapovalov. I remember still warming up, and I was asking my team, I was, like, did they just finish? It was so quick. He really just outplayed Stefanos, from what I saw. So I was really happy for him. I gave him a big hug, still in the search for his maiden ATP title, Shapovalov kicked off his Indian Wells bid with a 6-3, 6-4, win over Steve Johnson, setting up a clash with Marin Cilic in the third round. Regardless of his lack of silverware, he remains the second youngest player in the top 100. Boasting a win-loss record of 8-5 so far this season. Obviously it's a tough one. I haven't thought too much about it played him once before, so I kind of have a feel of him going into the match, but he's a tough player, Shapovalov said of Cilic. He was playing really well, so I'm expecting a battle. I feel good, as well. I'm looking forward to it. Andreescu making waves on the women's tour embed from Getty Images 12 months ago Andreescu was playing in a series of ITF events in Japan with the dream of progressing to the main stage of the WTA tour. Since then, she has played her first tour final in Auckland, clinched her first win over a top 10 player, Caroline Wozniacki, and rose to a current ranking high of 60th. If someone would have told me I would have gone to the fourth round of this tournament at the beginning of the year, I would have said, you're crazy. The two-time junior Grand Slam doubles champion said about reaching the last 16 in Indian Wells. It's just an incredible experience. This is one of the best tournaments in the world, so I'm just really, really happy, belonging to a trio of rising stars from the same country, a competitive rivalry is forming between them. 
something that Andreescu hopes will propel them further up the ranks in the future. We're all killing it, it's great. We have played so many junior tournaments together, and it's so nice to see each and every one of us at the top of our game at this stage in our life, only 18, 19, which is pretty incredible. She said, I think all that really contributes to our successes. We motivate each other. If one person does well, it's really nice to see. It isn't just each other they hope to inspire. A determined shop of olive is aiming to create a domino effect to boost the popularity of tennis back in his home country. In 2018 a survey conducted by Tennis Canada found that 6.6 .6 million Canadians played tennis at least once over a 12-month period. Furthermore, 60% of respondents said they were interested in the sport, placing tennis in 5th place out of 14 sports that was surveyed. To be honest, I'm not shocked. I was telling everybody, it's just a matter of time until Felix and Bianca show up, said Shabivalov. They both had unbelievable games in the juniors, and I grew up with both of them. So honestly, I knew the potential they have, and I knew it's just a matter of time until they are gonna have these big results. I'm really happy for them. They are both really good people, and hopefully we can just keep going like this to make tennis a really big sport in Canada. He added, while Stahl is not perfect, it is clear that Canada is becoming a fierce tennis nation. A prospect that is exciting many in the sport. Monday's schedule will see the men's and women's number ones headline the evening session just as they did on Saturday. Naomi Osaka, photo by Chrysline Kayo, copyright at Sport Vision, world number one Naomi Osaka is seeking her second straight title in the desert. This is the first time in her career that she looks to defend a title. On the men's side, the last year's champion is unfortunately absent, as Juan Martin Del Potro is still ailing from a knee injury he suffered in the fall. But the men's number one is present, who is also the man who won the last three majors. Naomi Osaka, 1, versus Danielle Collins, 25, embed from Getty Images on Saturday, Osaka defeated Kiki Ladenovic, who had upset Naomi just a few weeks ago in Dubai. Collins though may prove to be a sterner test. It was at this tournament one year ago and the 25-year-old American first made an impression on the WTA Tour, with a surprise run to the round of 16 highlighted by a win over Madison Keys. Just two weeks later, she came through qualifying to make the semis in Miami, which included an upset over Venus Williams. And Collins started off 2019 by reaching her first major semi-final in Australia. She is a fiery competitor, who will not hesitate to roar in her opponent's direction after winning a point. And she has a big game that can completely overpower the opposition when it's clicking, as we saw in her 6-0, 6-2 upset of Angelique Kerber in Melbourne. Osaka can match that firepower, and more importantly, has stronger defensive skills to match. Their only previous meeting was last October in Beijing, where Osaka crushed Colin 6-1, 6-0. I think this will be much tighter, as Collins is fully comfortable playing on US hard courts. I'm curious to see how Osaka deals with the pressure of defending this title, and without Sasha Bajan in her coaching box. Novak Djokovic, 1, versus Philip Cole Schreiber embed from Getty Images These two last played in the same round of this same tournament three years ago, which saw Djokovic win 7-5, 7-5. Cole Schreiber had his chances in that match, but it never felt out of Novak's control. Overall Djokovic has won eight of their nine career meetings with Cole Schreiber's only victory coming at Roland Garros nearly ten years ago. Their closest contest came in 2010 at Indian Wells, when Djokovic needed a third set tiebreak to prevail. That's actually the only time Novak has dropped a set to Philip in the five times they've played on a hard court. The 35-year-old German has been a dependable top 50 player dating back for well over a decade. And he's capable of pushing top names, as we recently saw in Dubai when he forced a third set against Roger Federer. 
Djokovic did not play his best in his opening round against Bjorn Frantangelo, his first match since his Australian Open victory in January. But I would assume Novak will up his level here, and there's nothing in Cole Schreiber's game that should give Djokovic too much trouble. Other notable matches on day 8 embed from Getty Images Venus Williams, coming off her emotional victory over Petra Kvitova, versus Christina McHale, a fellow American Sasha Zarev 3, who had been battling a viral illness, versus Jan Leonard Struff, a fellow German in a battle of rising ATP stars, Felix Agarali Asim, fresh off his upset of Stefanos Tsitsipas, versus Yoshihito Nishioka, who impressively took out Roberto Bautista a gut on Saturday it will be firepower against Finesse, with Dominic Team 7, versus Giles Simon, 27. The former world number one believes his group of peers didn't do the right job concerning calls for a change in leadership. Rafael Nadal at the 2019 Australian Open, photo Roberto Delalevo, former world number one Rafael Nadal has said he is, disappointed, about the lack of communication he received from the ATP Players' Council over calls for the removal of ATP CEO Chris Kermode. Last week it was confirmed that Kermode's tenure at the governing body of men's tennis would come to an end later this year after failing to win support of the three players' representatives. A decision that has generated a mixed response. Earlier this year, Canadian player Vasek Pospisil sent an email calling for a CEO that first and foremost represents our interests. Novak Djokovic, who is the president of the council, has been named as a key driving force in calls for change and reportedly voted for Kermode's removal. Although the results of that vote are confidential and the Serbian has remained neutral about the development when speaking to media in Indian Wells. Whilst the Players' Council are separate to the three individuals that decided Kermode's fate, 11-time French Open champion Nadal has criticized their handling of the situation. The Players' Council issues advisory decisions to the board of directors. Members are elected by their peers. I can't say much about this because as you know, I am outside of the politics, and I'm being honest. Nobody, from the council, came to me to explain why this stuff happened, Nadal said following his 6-1, 6-1, win over Jared Donaldson at the BNP Paribas Open. But at the same time, of course, I am disappointed that nobody came and explained why, what's the real reason of we don't have Chris continuing running our sport, Nadal is a vocal supporter of Kermode, who has held the CEO position since 2014. Previously describing his removal as counterproductive, clearly bemused by the situation, the Spaniard said he never even received an email or text from a member of the council concerning a potential change in leadership. Normally, they have to ask the players about what they think to make a crucial decision like this one, and I really hope that they did with the rest of the players. If they did it, is great. It was not my case, he said. Nobody text me to speak about or to ask me about what's my thoughts about that decision. Other players have also expressed their disappointment. Three-time Grand Slam champion Stan Wawrinka said he was really sad and disappointed about the situation. A sentiment echoed also by figures such as Nicholas Mahieu, Leighton Hewitt, Magnus Norman and Thomas Johansson. Probably the guys who are running the council, they didn't do the right job, because when they are there, on the board, they are there representing us, so normally they have to ask what our opinion is. Not in every small decision, but in big decisions. In my opinion, this one was a big decision, stated Nadal. Kermode will continue his position as CEO until later this year when a replacement will be named. Who is on the player council? 1 to 50 singles, Kevin Anderson, Vice President 1 to 50 singles, Robin Haas 1 to 50 singles, John Isner 1 to 50 singles, Sam Query 51 to 100 singles, NHS UN Lu 51 to 100 singles, Vasek Pospisil 1 to 100 doubles, Jamie Murray 1 to 100 doubles, Bruno Soares at large, Novak Djokovic, President at large, Sergei Stakovsky coach, Daniel Valverde alumni, Colin Dowd's well for the first time in more than three years, Williams was forced to retire during a competitive match. 
Serena Williams, photo by Chrysleen Kayo, copyright at Sport Vision, Serena Williams campaign at this year's BNP Paribas Open has come to an abrupt halt after she was forced to retire from her third round match on Sunday. The former world number one was taking on Garbine Muguruza but was forced to call it quits whilst trailing 3-6, 0-1. Williams was suffering from a virus and sought medical treatment during the match by having her blood pressure taken. Despite getting off to a solid start by racing to a 3-0 lead initially, the American looked fatigued on the court and had one stage about to faint. Before the match, I did not feel great, and then it just got worse with every second, extreme dizziness and extreme fatigue. Williams said in a statement released by the tournament. By the score, it might have looked like I started well, but I was not feeling at all well physically. I will focus on getting better and start preparing for Miami. In recent times a Williams retirement has been a rare occurrence. The last time she did so was against Jarmila Wolf at the 2016 Hopman Cup due to a knee injury. On the WTA Tour, her last retirement occurred all the way back in 2014 at the Wuhan Open. Muguruza, who is the only player to have defeated both of the Williams sisters in a Grand Slam final, admitted that she she felt weird about their outcome of their match. The Spaniard has now leveled their head to head to 3 to 3. I don't know. It's really a weird feeling, because I don't feel like I won the match point and get the, well done, you know, good match, handshake. It was just like, man, we'll play next time. Yeah, I think I played well one set. I'm going to take the positive side of that, she said. As Williams bids to recover in time for the Miami Open, Muguruza will take on Kiki Burns in the fourth round. Burns edged out Johanna Conta 7-6, 10-6-4, during a closely fought match between the two. Williams' top 10 spot now in danger as a result of her withdrawal, Williams is now at risk of exiting the top 10. One of her biggest threats comes in the shape of Ashley Barty. The Australian eased to a 6-3, 6-2, win over Jennifer Brady to set up a clash with Alina Svitolina. Barty is currently 11th in the live rankings. Should she progress to the quarterfinals, she will make her top 10 debut and kick Williams out of the group. I've played against Barty a couple of times. I know her game a little bit so I have to be ready, and I'll try to recover for a tough one. Brady is playing really good tennis now, beating some top players. She can produce a very good match, so I'll have to be ready for that as well, WTA Tennis.com quoted Svitolina as saying about her upcoming match. Should Barty crack the top 10, she would become the first Australian to do so for six years. Her current ranking best is 12th in the world. Elsewhere at the tournament, Canadian star Bianca Andreescu continues her rise in the women's game. The 18-year-old dropped only three games during her comprehensive 6-1, 6-2 win over Stephanie Vogel in less than an hour. Since the start of 2019, Andreescu has risen almost 50 places to a current ranking high of 60th. If someone would have told me I would have gone to the third fourth of this tournament at the beginning of the year, I would have said, you're crazy. The delighted Canadian told reporters afterwards. It's just an incredible experience. This is one of the best tournaments in the world, so I'm just really, really happy, Andreescu will play China's Wang Chang in the last 16 on Tuesday.